Greetings, my friends. This is Melus Njalambi from Melvi Broadcasting Network. Just presenting my thoughts on a very trending topic. I think some of you might have seen, you might have heard. The Chief Justice uttered a statement that really has changed the dialogue and the debate in the space of South Africa in the last uh, few weeks or so. And it prompted me to realize that we're actually living in a postmodern or postmodernic society where people are so techno savvy and people can access information anywhere, can tweet it, can share it, can distribute it, and from it can develop their own perspectives without even needing any institution to influence them. We live in an age of skepticism, an age where rebellion is trending and is seen to be innovative and bold, confident. We live in a technological society um, where technology has made us look like we are holy beings. We live in an age where we call it the media age. And so the reality and truth are defined and measured by how many likes and how many tweets you can get and uh, trending is a big issue. And we live in an age where there is no absolute truths. Your views, your tweet, your perspective on any issue can be seen to be the truth. We live in an age where we thrive on science. And we no longer accept anything that's called pseudo-science and religion is no longer the basis of all knowledge. Science has become our God, as it were. Uh, but yet we live in a world where the sun still rises from the same place with all this predictableness, and it sets on the same time, the same horizon. With the, scars, the sky is still blue, the stars are still up there, the rain still come on specific seasons of the motions of the planet around the world. Yet, my friends, with all this technological advancement, we could say we are living in the midday of our civilization. And yet, need I tell you, this is about midnight for human science as we know it. Because the Bible tells us that uh, in the absence of belief in truth, conspiracy theories come in, humanistic views come in, and these theories scantly provide us with some insights of how things are done and they change the way we perceive the world and the truth. But let me tell you, my friend, the great controversy between truth and error is not a conspiracy theory. There is an evil one that exists. The Bible speaks about him and his hosts very clearly. The existence of God can be seen in the predictability and the glory and the expanse of the universe. This could have never evolved by chance. The complexity of the human life and life in general and all the billions of species that can easily be contained, all the DNA in a tablespoon, that, my friend, tells us there is a God who exists in heaven and he is in charge. So while we claim our rights we should also remember we have responsibilities that go with those rights. And so I would like to let you know that in this day and age where people are free to speak and say what they think, there is still absolute truth that exists. And I want to have a conversation with a colleague and a brother of mine. I'm hoping the internet and the, 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 the conference system will work. We want to talk about four key things that I analyzed in the Chief Justice's prayer. And we will possibly, if time allows, run a few series on this to really extrapolate what is it that he said and what is it that he did not say? And what is it that he said but is not in line with the scripture? But what also is it that he said that makes his utterance so relevant to our day? Some may accuse us of being reactionary. I don't think I'm reacting. I just need to reiterate what we already know is the truth. So there's no reaction here. We're just responding to what has been uttered and is in the public space. And I'm hoping to give you the gospel view because he talked about four things. Number one, he talked about prayer. 
Let's talk about what prayer is, what it does, who do we pray to, and what is it that we should pray about? Did the Bible give us an agenda of what we should be praying about? Secondly, he talked about the presence of demonic, satanic forces that are working behind vaccines. Does the devil really exist? Are there evil spirits? Are there demons in this world? Do we have anything in the Bible that tells us that there is indeed in this world we are living, in this beautiful, glorious and um, lovely world of ours that we enjoy taking holidays to these resort places? Is this place ours alone or we are sharing it with the arch enemy? And who is this arch enemy? Let's hear what the Bible says. And thirdly, thirdly, he talked about end times. That's a fascinating, bigger term. Is it in the Bible? Are we living in the end times? What is it that the Bible tells us about our time that makes it the end time? Did he say something that the world does not know? Does my president of South Africa, His Excellency Honorable uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, know that these are the end times? Does the Honorable President Emerson Mnangagwa and his parliament and all his ministers know that these are the end times? What does the Bible have to tell us about that? And lastly, he talked about the fourth thing he mentioned was 666. Oh, that enigmatic um, number of the end times that many people are so fascinated about. I want to take time to just allow the Bible to speak for itself on what the number 666 is. No interpretation Just hear what the Bible is saying from our understanding and decoding of prophecy. I hope you'll be able to join me. We'll be sending you the details. You don't want to miss this. We want to reiterate truth as we understand it. Truth that will set you free. So may the Lord bless you as you watch Melvi Broadcasting Network, a divine voice out of Africa. Amen.